Hello. Hello. And Ew. welcome back. <laughs> this is you. <laughs> Disclaimer, if I yell at my dog, it is because he's eating flowers. Because they're Hello, idiots. Saudi. Topic of the day. Why are we like So today we're discussing um, why sexual abuse is not discussed in school and everything else across the board is not saying that other things are important like school shootings but statistically speaking your child is way more likely to get abused by a teacher than to be a part of a school shooting i wonder why that is i guess just the likelihood of it though like depends on how far in depth you think about things yeah. or is it like just what they want you to focus on that's true all I'm saying is, is like, I remember in fifth grade watching, like, the whole, like, period videos and stuff. Yeah. And you go through, like, sex ed in, like, high school. But that's to teach you about, more so about the things that can happen. Like, more specifically, like, STDs, things like that. Like, I still have a whole project from ninth grade about gonorrhea. Like, I swear I do. I'll show you later. I do. But it doesn't go anything beyond that. It doesn't tell you. Yeah. It don't teach you about sexual predators or who that could be or what that looks like. Right. So, and I mean, there is that aspect of a lot of people would be uncomfortable with their children, like learning about that. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, Travis had said like if Sky knew anything about this stuff, it would take away her innocence, which it would. So I understand, but Sky's ten. You know, she's in fourth grade. So I what we're talking about is more so of high school predominantly, but like unfortunately the middle school age is a big ticket for predators. Here's my question. Here's my rebuttal to that. What is more what is more taking away her innocence? Her knowing about it or it happening to her. Right. No, I I 100% agree. I'm just saying I can understand that aspect. You know, like before this happened to us and we were in the mindset of, I know it happens, but it's never going to happen to me. I would have been like, eh, I don't know if like I want my kid hearing about it. But now, like, obviously it's rocked our entire world and I would never want another family to go through this. So in my head, it's like, is it you you need to be educated on it because ignoring it acting like it doesn't exist it, that's not going to do anything no that it's either makes it worse. it's yeah so it's like just get over it rip the band-aid off and hard shit has to be talked about that's what i'm saying i would much rather my kids be educated versus it happening and them not know to come to me mm -hmm. you know they talk about taking so many things out of school you know they talk about taking important parts of history out of school they talk about taking god out of schools yeah but religion racial things but at the end of the day these are all things that are hard topics to talk about mm -hmm. that sometimes need to be incorporated yeah they need to be incorporated because realistically at least for me everything i learned in, especially in high school in my adolescence in high school i didn't retain most of it but I have a project from ninth grade for not, for gonorrhea. I remember that. It stuck with me. I remember things like that because they're real life things that I can still apply to my life today. Mm -hmm. Not saying like you don't learn important things in school. You do. But I don't think they're doing enough no. to teach them real life situations like this. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, the sexual predator could be teaching you math. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it just, it is a super dark subject to talk about, but, like, it, you would not want this to happen to your child or your family. I can't even, like, come up with words right now about how awful it, it is, and I know that if Jordan or any other kid would have gotten, you know, at least a mild way of maybe like a video that somebody put together on like predators or whatever and then handed out the packet that we got from the kids talk mm -hmm. if they were to do that that would like 
make it pop in their brains, you know, and then that way down the line, a memory could be triggered and like, okay, well, that's a little weird to me, you know, something might be going on. And it like, we may not be here today. Well, on top of that, too, it's like, if you think about it, from my experience, a lot of kids, if they do go through something like that, who do they reach out to first? A school counselor. You know what I mean? Or a friend that then goes to a school counselor because they're comfortable with this person because it's an outside person yeah. versus feeling the embarrassment of having to tell their family or being afraid to tell their family this is another adult that they are told that they're supposed to trust. Mm-hmm. So why is it that, you know, things like that are happening? You know, my kid is comfortable enough to talk to you about those things, but you're not comfortable enough to talk to my kid about it in school. Yeah. Why? Yeah, I really don't get it, and um, that's something that I want to change in this world, and that's something that I want to personally engage. So if, like, my mom and I were talking, and I told you she wants to go to the school board, so, you know, that's just a start in the road, but it's just, like, things are so different now. Like, every kid has a cell phone. Mm -hmm. So the opportunities, I mean, not just with a cell phone, but the opportunities for a child to be abused, not just sexually, but abused, period, it has skyrocketed since before because there are, you know, social media and whatever they all use. So (sighs) I had a point in my head and it just went I completely <laughs> forgot what I was going to say. It was a really good point, too. It'll come back. Social media? Anything I, to do with that? I don't Cell remember. phones? I think so, but I can't remember. Damn. Oh! I remembered. We preach to our kids stranger danger. Right. Consistently. Stranger danger, stranger danger, stranger danger. But statistically speaking they are more likely to be abused in some way shape or form by somebody that's close to them 90 percent 90 percent of predators are known to your child so family member teacher instructor friend whomever 90 percent are known people to your children Mm -hmm. so with that let's spit out some Cold hard facts now. Where the facts at? Where the facts? Show me the car facts. Okay. Not sponsored. So, <laughs> what is child sexual abuse? Sexual abuse is any interaction between a child and an adult or an older child in which the child is used for the sexual stimulation of the perpetrator or an observer. Sexual abuse often involves direct physical contact, touching, kissing, fondling, rubbing, oral sex, or penetration of the vagina or anus. Sometimes a perpetrator may enjoy showing his or her private parts to a child or by observing or filming a child removing his or her clothes. Perpetrators often do not use physical force but may use use play, lies, threats, or other intimidating methods to perpetrate on children and keep their silence. Who is at risk? Children of all ages. Oh my god, you take over. (laughs) She's got hot Cheeto dust on her. Got hot Cheeto fingers. <laughs> I I'm hate reading done. aloud. Dude, I'm not done with them either. I can't like lick my fingers and stick them back in the bag. Just take turns. If I read out loud too long, I start slurring my words. My mouth is like I'm tired. <laughs> words, I can do them. Okay, who's at risk? I got this. <laughs> I feel like we're in high school again. And I just got called out by the teacher. <laughs> Okay, who's at risk? Children of all ages, races, ethnicities, and economic backgrounds may be at risk to sexual abuse. Child sexual abuse affects both girls and boys in all kinds of neighborhoods and communities and in countries all around the world. Now time for the facts. Sexual abuse facts. One in every four girls and one in every four... Sorry. Wow. My turn. (laughs) We forgot to trade off. See? Everybody does it. Mm Mm-hmm. One in four girls and one in six boys. Correct. Sexual abuse facts. Facts. One in every four girls and one in every six boys are sexually abused before the age of 18. 73% of child sexual abuse survivors do not tell anyone about the abuse for at least a year. 45% of child sexual abuse 
abuse survivors. Man, I'm I'm messing up. We can't read aloud, <laughs> but we also can't remember them. So, forty-five percent of child sexual abuse survivors do not tell anyone for at least five years. Some never disclose at all. Only twelve percent of child sexual abuse is ever reported to the authorities. One in ten children experience sexual abuse before they are eighteen years old. 9% of 10 to 17 year olds receive sexual requests on the internet. 90% of children know their perpetrator. 82% of all victims under 18 are female. Two out of three victims are ages 12 to 17. So that's why I said for whatever reason, you have to learn about the perpetrator's mind and how <clears throat> it's sickening and it works, but they like the younger kids. And then, obviously, this goes without saying, but all the children that go through this are four times more likely to develop addiction issues <clears throat> yeah. throughout their lives. Your turn. Okay. <laughs> Possible signs of sexual abuse. An increase in nightmares and or other sleeping difficulties, withdrawn behavior, angry outbursts, anxiety, depression, not wanting to be left alone with a particular individual or individuals. Um, Sexual knowledge, language, and or behaviors that are inappropriate for the child's age. Although many children who have experienced sexual abuse show behavioral and emotional changes, many others do not. It is therefore very important to not focus only on catching sexual abuse on early on, but on prevention and communication by teaching children about body safety and healthy body boundaries and by encouraging several open communication lines about sexual matters. Sorry. Okay. I'm good. We're good. What? <laughs> Listen, after some of that was not written there. Oh. <laughs> you just made it up. Yeah, I did. You added it in there. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I was like, keep going. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Um, Michigan is one of the several states where sexual abuse is most common. San Diego, California. Wow. San Diego, California being the highest. And this is all literally stuff you can pick up your phone if you're not already holding it and Google and know for yourself. So, unfortunately, you know, I didn't take the time to learn about any of this stuff before this happened to us or before we knew about it. So, in reality, it could have easily happened to myself or Skyly with me being uneducated about this topic. And, you know, and unfortunately, it happened to Jordan, but we've been able to grow in our religion and grow as a family and try our best to turn something great from all this dark or <laughs> turn <laughs> something function. negative into a positive. Yeah. So, you know. We can't change it. It is what it is. It happened. It's terrible, but I can learn so much from this and teach others because we both agree it's just not talked about enough. Not enough awareness is brought about this, and that's like, I can't even, I don't even understand. I really don't. Yeah, and you know, we, uh, hold on. Is he jumping Go. in the pool? Come here. I would prefer him not to jump in the pool. At least not with me not in it. Come here, baby. Let me move my mic. Come here. Come on. Good boy. Come on. I'm watching in the sliding glass window, but you can't tell that on the camera, so I probably look like I'm just, like, zoning out. <laughs> um, you know, we, we talk a lot about educating our kids. But at the same time, if we're not educated as the parents then how are we any better? We right. need to be educated as parents as well to know what to look for in our kids, like the different changes that can happen. Yeah. It's like all those signs I just read off. Um, we don't even think too much into it as parents. You know, we're like, oh, they're being a teenager. Oh, they're being a kid. Well, no, maybe not. Yeah. Sometimes you have to ask your kids those really hard questions. And that goes back to, we talked about at one point in one of our podcasts, we talked about, um, you know, boundaries with our kids and the cell phone thing and all that. But it's like, you have to have that 
open line of communication. Communication is absolute key. And that's, that goes for anything in life. If we don't communicate with the, things with people, how do you know? I cannot read your mind. You cannot read my mind. So you have to be able to communicate things and talk about it. Yeah. And you, it might make you uncomfortable, you know. Teenagers are like, ew, I don't want to talk to you about sex and stuff. Even now, I'm like, I'm, I'll am i be 25 next week. And even now, I'm like, I'm not talking to my mom about sex and stuff. But sometimes you have to. Sometimes you need somebody else's opinion. Or if you have questions, you have to have that line of communication, especially when it comes to these predators, because you just you never know who it is. You never know who it could be. It could be... Anyone from a complete stranger to their best friend to their own father yep. or mother or whomever. It could be anybody, literally yep. anybody. And, you know, with this whole social media thing, it's like these kids are all over social media and they don't realize that the internet is forever. The internet is forever. There are weirdos out there. Mm -hmm. And then they are also desensitizing themselves every single day more and more to what is out there mm -hmm. that's not for you know kids their age or whatever yep just like they're you know how many times in high school where were you in a situation where people were passed around everybody's nudes yeah all the time yeah there was a website about people like girls did not give them their permission for that's, their photos to be posted and these kids don't te don't realize that that is technically technically sexual exploitation yeah you cannot do that mm -hmm. while you you know while young women and young men shouldn't be sending each other nude pictures anyway but if you do that you don't know that that per what that person's going to do with it right you know you have no clue yep and that turns into a form of technically sexual abuse because then that person you become so vulnerable to that person you know and they can easily turn around and be like well you're gonna do this for me or i'm sending this to everybody mm -hmm. and that's how easy it can start and these kids do not realize that they don't realize that we didn't as kids either though right like i don't know about you but i never really i was never comfortable in my own skin enough to do that anyway but I had friends that were sending people pictures of every part of their body. And I'm like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Because now it's just going to come right back to you. Mm -hmm. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go through the entire, potentially the entire city. Because that happened often where, you know, then it got transferred to a different school. Yeah. Made its way all the way to different schools, different friend groups, different cities. I feel like our generation and generations after us, a good portion of that population has seen everybody naked. Mm -hmm. And it's like, for what? Especially now. Because mm -hmm. it's like, women should have be able to have their boobs out, da-da-da-da-da. Men are women. Women are men. Like, <laughs> the list goes on and on. Shit is wild nowadays. It gets crazy. That's like, you know, you can... I. Okay. Sorry, Terry. If you watch this at some point, I'm calling you out. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Terry, all the time, if he has to pee, he's just going to pee wherever. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care where he's at. He's going to pee wherever. No, I'm not saying, like, if there's a sh ton of people around, <laughs> he's going to just whip it out and pee wherever. He's not going to do that. He'll at least, you know, go behind a tree, whatever. But I tell him all the time, you cannot do that. You cannot do that. If somebody sees you. Mm hmm you become a sexual predator. And Terry would never in a million years hurt a child. He would never hurt anybody. But you become a sexual predator at that point. You can't do that. See, Drives isn't that crazy, though? Like, that, this is what makes me want to learn more about predators themselves and how their brain works. Because you just sat here and said Terry would never hurt a child, which I believe myself, 100%. But, you know, like... What if you're sitting here and you're saying the same thing about another person and that person is out there doing that? Mm -hmm. Because you don't see that side of them. That's mm -hmm. how... Prime example of, of, you know, your kind of way of thinking. 
Terry and I went to Meyer yesterday. Took some bottles back. We both had to go to the bathroom, so we went up to the restroom. Um, this woman came like to the women's restroom and she brought her child in there, which female it was a it was a female in the women's restroom and then the little girl was a girl. Whatever, fine. Um, the child was looking under everybody's stalls as yeah. kids do so i was like all right well when i walked out terry said that the mom was gonna leave the kids out in the hallway mm -hmm. and terry was standing there again terry would never in a million years hurt a child ever but that woman did not know that mm -hmm. that woman did not know that why on earth and she wasn't like a like she wasn't a baby, but she she's probably about six or seven. Yeah. No way. No way. There's a grown man standing out and out there. Mm -hmm. I don't care what he's doing. Right. I am not leaving my child out here with a grown man standing there. Yeah. Like I said, Terry would never in a million years do anything to harm a child. Yep. But she did not know that. Yeah, and it doesn't even matter if you're out in public because, like, we were just talking yesterday or the day before about the fentanyl strips mm -hmm. and other tactics. He could have, I mean, not talking about Terry, but a grown man could have been, like, you know, right under her nose mm -hmm. and then, like, carried her right outside. Oh, just like that well, in a blink of an eye. The um, the restrooms for that Meyer specifically are right there at the door. Anybody standing outside that bathroom if she would if she would have left the child outside the door thank god the child ran into the bathroom with their mom yeah but anybody standing at that door could have just boop, walked right. right out with her yeah and it's and like what are you what are you gonna do as a mother you hear your child scream but your pants are around your ankles yeah because you're using the bathroom mm -hmm. and by the time you get your pants pulled up and everything else that person's gone yep and you're never gonna see your child again yep that's horrible I could, I could never. And that happens. And that's my whole point. Like, this will be a, a series, I guess you could call it, on what things to look out for in your child's behavior, in possible predators' behaviors, you know, things they're doing, um, how you can go about talking with your child, things that are both normal and abnormal during all the growth period years. It has it clearly all in this packet. So in different situations that could occur where you yes. need to be extra cautious and you need yes. to be thinking about where you as a parent are comfortable with sending your child, leaving your child, all those things. Yeah. And your child should be educated in those situations too. Yeah. Like we'll end it on this topic. Yeah. Here's a controversial topic. Um you have you know, Sky. Mm -hmm. So let's say Sky says, I want to go to a sleepover. Are you saying yes or no? I would have before, not now. And Travis and I have already discussed this. And I'm glad. I mean, I think that Chelsea is on the same page as far as stranger danger, but Chelsea hasn't experienced this. So Travis and I are way more helicopter right now than she is. Mm -hmm. So that's my point right there. Like our eyes were open. Chelsea's was not. Mm -hmm. So it's just different. And, you know, I just want to spread the education because I don't, I know what happens in my house. I don't know what happens in your house. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how many friends has Jordan already had that's come forward and been like, this happened to me too. My dad did this, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like she, she is not going to your house. Sorry. Like Sky can make friends other ways and spend time and socialize just fine without overnights. And I don't feel bad or guilty about taking that away because at the end of the day, it's either deal, dealing with her attitude or losing my child or yeah. something irreversible happening to my child. Mm hmm. So, but, um, <clears throat> see, I have a, I have a slightly differing opinion. I agree with you for the most part. Mm -hmm. Now, if it is somebody that I fully trust with my own life, mm -hmm. I'll trust them with my kid's life. Yeah. But if they're, you know, if, if it's, if they're in like middle school and this is a friend they've had since yeah. 
elementary school and I know their parents very well and you know what I mean they've never done anything that makes me uncomfortable things like that I'm gonna go ahead and say that the it's worth the risk because if I know these people personally I'm more willing to be like okay but, but that's the whole thing right again that's it could where it be gets them. super controversial because yeah. it could be them yeah that's why I said like I'm talking like I like we've went on camping trips you know what I mean like mm-hmm. If I, it would be like if I had a child the same age as Sky right now, if I had a daughter the same age as Sky right now, I would have no problem with my child staying at your house. Yeah, and you vice I mean? versa. So it, it is a rocky subject. It varies. It, but you just have to use your own judgment. Yep, you and have to use your best then judgment. And also being aware of yourself because those tactics, those little red flags aren't going to go unnoticed if you are actively prepared you know like i'm doing all those trainings renee sent me like Mm -hmm. moving forward from tomorrow on so i'm open and i'm not living like anxiously or terrified but i'm just aware and that's what i think everybody should have i think it should be like advertised on tv once in a while or there should be some billboards about child abuse Mm -hmm. or child sexual predators something when do you ever see it other than when you hear about it happening to somebody or you're reading something that's it i will say i have noticed that and this goes more towards adults so um i don't know when the last time you were at a hospital was but they have like domestic violence things domestic violence yeah in the bathrooms but that's not I mean, domestic violence can go hand in hand with sexual abuse. Yes, mm-hmm. it nine times out of ten it does. But we're talking specifically about adolescents and sexual abuse. You know, yeah. sexual predators. So that you know, the whole sleepover thing comes back to your amount of trust in another human being, but also your line of communication with your kids. Yeah, because if I send my kids somewhere for the night. And they are open and honest enough with me to come back and say, Mom, this is what happened. And I was it made me a little uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Thank you for telling me that. Now I could have a conversation with that person and be like, listen, you did this, made my kid uncomfortable. My child won't be returning to your home. Right. If you don't understand that, that's on you. Sorry. But, yeah. but unfortunately, it's not. It's just not talked about. It's not. Like, you aren't prepared for that situation. Your kid's not prepared for that situation. Mm -hmm. So it just gets to a point where it's like, oh, too late. It happened. Which is why we, as especially as adults and as parents, we need to educate ourselves to then educate our kids. Yeah. And I'm not saying, like, show me the cold, hard facts, like, you know, death and all that stuff. But 12%, like was stated earlier, of the cases are reported. That's so many cases on unheard of unknown some people out there still not sticking up again why we started blue talk Mm -hmm. if you're out there speak up because your story matters too just as much as anyone else's and doing nothing hiding acting like it doesn't exist it'll never help or happen to you it's not going to change anything it's just going to get worse and worse with how our world is now how everybody is how technology works it's so easy for it to happen literally so easy so more people will just need to start standing up and doing something about it because it's our kids. Like, there, there's a lot of shit that happens in this world, but our kids, like, that's what I live for. That's what mm-hmm. you'll live for, you yeah. know? So. <clears throat> Terry and I had that conversation, and this is a completely different subject, but Terry and I had that conversation the other day of, like, you know, what is your purpose in life if you don't want kids? Yeah. My purpose in life is, my purpose in life as a human being is to procreate. Right. I'm here to have kids and build generational wealth and build a good life for my kids. That's what I want to do, and I want to protect them in any way I can. Yeah. I'm not saying, I'm not saying protect your kids from everything. That's just not No, possible. not at all. You can't protect them from everything, but you can educate them. Yes. You can prepare them 100 yeah, percent. you you cannot protect them at all costs yeah you can prepare them you mm-hmm. can educate them you can do things to prevent it but you can't stop it you can't you can't sh- like you can't cover them from everything you know right. what i mean shelter yeah yeah you can't thank you <laughs> you can't shelter them from everything but you can help them especially when it comes to these types of situations yeah 
support is the number one thing that they're going to need if god forbid it does happen to them yeah if they unfortunate if they are unfortunate enough to go through a situation like that so often kids won't come forward because they're scared yeah because they're scared that they are going to get in trouble super important for them to know that they won't you're not going to get in trouble and it's super important for them to know that they have a support system that's you know and a lot of parents won't believe their kids Mm -hmm. and i don't understand that i do not get that they don't want to i don't know it's a disbelief it is absolute disbelief but believe your kids yeah most time most of the time kids are not just going to pull something like that out of thin air like that's something real that's something serious and you need to take it as such yep um so i want to end on two notes one Mm -hmm. being this topic got started today because jordan had confided in her friends last night and you know because it's so taboo and kids aren't able to mentally grasp the severity of jordan's situation you know she was expressing her feelings for her father still and nobody understands and nobody would ever understand unless they've been through it themselves but jordan got bullied for it and i believe kids are cruel kids are always going to be cruel kids are that's mean, what it better is better as parents sky's already been picked on you just you know, explain it to her the best you can and you move on. I was bullied. It happens. You just got to help your child realize how to react and how to let it affect them, you know. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if it was a topic that was actively talked about in schools or just, you know, brought to awareness more, then kids would be less apt to bully them or maybe have slightly more of an understanding of it Mm -hmm. you know and jordan could have avoided that whole situation but it's so like oh my god like that's terrible that's so weird i can't believe that like yeah and then two um like skylee's 10 so obviously she doesn't know what's going on here she just knows that you know jordan's been affected in a bad way by her father because i believe that she is too young way too young to know the deep dark parts of this story Mm -hmm. so but she can know what she should know at her age which is age appropriate so that's my point it's like you just gradually you know do it on your own time with your child and just say things that they need to know right now just you know to put that idea in their head like if sky's walking from school when she was she doesn't anymore but when she was like you don't ever go near somebody that pulls up next to you you don't talk to nobody you make a phone call immediately you run to somebody you know stuff like that and then with this stuff you explain maybe things that they could look out for at their age you know because sky is very smart but again she's too young to know the dark stuff so just use your own judgment and your own relationship with your child to gauge that portion of this obviously in high school it's boss the wall they need to know everything <laughs> yeah you know but yeah so on that note on that note i'm making fettuccine alfredo so I'm <laughs> keep an open mind communicate with your kids and we'll see you for part two part two, part two. goodbye